Lately I've been reading old Spider-Man and post Frank Miller Daredevil and I got tired so I decided to read something more modern to switch it up so I read Shadow of the Green Goblin which recently finished on Marvel Unlimited. Shadow is set during a Spider-Man's early days and it follows Spider-Man's first encounter with the first goblin, this dude, the Proto-Goblin, and it follows Harry Osborn and Gwen Stacy before they met Peter Parker. This might not sound like the most exciting miniseries, but I, I promise you, it's really good, but it is one massive retcon to Spider-Man lore. This series explores important topics for Spider-Man and gives us insight to old stories like, have you ever wondered who Gwen and Harry's moms were? I have, there's video evidence. Gwen's mom, Helen, is terminally ill, and we get to see Gwen deal with that. Harry's mom, Emily, gets explored here. A big theme in the story is mothers and the loss of parental figures, that's why the family retcons. These are things that I've said were missing in the main Spider-Man series, so I'm very happy to see these things get expanded upon, and the retcons are done with such care, they fit in perfectly. Or at least as far as I can tell, I don't think anything really contradicts anything I read. Getting to the point now, usually I would hate retcons. I do not like it when new writers touch old stuff, because most of the time retcons end up devaluing old stories, changing themes, or most of the time, how it goes in the comic it ends up making zero sense. I hate retcons, but there are retcons like Shadow of the Green Goblin which are actually good. Another famous retcon is MJ's character, and the Falco made it so MJ always knew Spider-Man's secret and identity and only pretended not to. He also adds a whole backstory to MJ which makes perfect sense and turns the character from a good character to one of my absolute favorites to come out of the book. Retcons can be great. Like I've always said, retcons are good. Shadow of the Lame title is written by J.M. Demetrius and illustrated by Michael Santamaria and the story explores grief. It's narrated by old Peter Parker looking back at it in his early days. This story takes place sometime after issue 4 of Amazing Spider-Man, so we're talking about early, early days, like we're talking early Ditko, months into Spider-Man's career. Uncle Ben is still a fresh wound and Peter and May are still grieving. Gwen's mother has terminal illness, so she and her father are grieving, and then there's Harry whose mom, Emily, is revealed to be alive and plotting. All three are showing younger characters sad about their lives and their parents helping them through it. Peter and Gwen get over their issues while Harry becomes trapped in his because Norman is such a piece of trash. Shadow of the Green Goblin is gener about generational trauma and because Norman was treated bad by his dad so he took a bunch of his bad stuff and now lays it on to Harry. I like how Demetrius writes Norman Osborn here. Uh, he's this madman who might have some humanity but he's so far gone it doesn't really matter anymore. Nobody can pull him out of all of it except himself, and even then, who could trust his redemption? And I like Older Peter's take on Norman, he's recollecting on Norman after the fact and basically says, you know what, screw that guy. I hate him and I don't care if he could have been redeemed. Absolutely base take from uh, Peter and he feels human. Peter is supposed to be the best of us, but the truth is, some people are never redeemed and it's reasonable to not always expect us to always forgive people. Norman is so far gone, his redemption is no longer Peter's concern, and he has made peace with that. Because he deserves to say, screw that guy. It's human. The story itself is good, but the narration is really something that really helps it stand out. You're listening to the bias in his words. You can hear the anger and sadness uh, matured by years. It adds an extra layer that makes the story that bit more interesting, more than just another retcon. It's more than that. You get insight to oh, future Peter and it invites you to examine these old stories with that long term in mind. When I read this story I'm thinking about Harry's eventual downfall, with Peter I'm thinking about what I believe is Jenkins' story about Goblin. The story highlights how Aunt May was probably the reason why Peter was able to become better after losing his parent, because Aunt May helps Peter, they grief together. And Harry ended up becoming worse. Harry's a good person, but even the best person can be brought down when you live with a monster like Norman every single day. He doesn't have that same level of help. Harry's mom was also a good person, but ended up manipulating the proto-goblin and tried to have Norman killed. The Mateus is really good at writing emotional death to these characters. Even Norman has his personal goblins from his childhood that haunt him and ultimately push him to become even a greater monster than his father ever was. Overcoming your traumas is a part of life. It's hard, and you'll always carry those traumas with you, turning Uncle Ben into Spider-Man. Norman was never able to do this. With that, he cast his shadow over everyone around him. Peter, Gwen, Harry all suffer because Norman's abuse. Harry will eventually go down the goblin hole, but Harry's also strong enough to pull himself up and struggle with it. Shadow of the Green Goblin even has Harry promise to be there for Gwen, uh, which to me 
makes his eventual downfall even more tragic. He's shown to be a great guy, and it, it's, you know, I don't know, it adds that la layer of tragedy to it. I love Conway, but he kind of forgets to show Harry's love for Gwen in his run. Like, seriously, I genuinely forgot that they, these two were best friends at one point. I don't think he even comments on Gwen's passing, which is super odd now that I think about it retroactively, since they were introduced together as a pair. This story is a retcon, but I think it managed to add to these characters by reinforcing what was always there, and never really deviating from those original stories. Uncle Ben is not mentioned during Ditko's run until the first annual, and Peter and May are struggling to, uh, to share their pain, thus it fits and adds a beautiful arc for the two. But Gwen and Harry are best friends, which is true. Here we get to genuinely see that part which was uh, kinda ignored a little bit uh, during those early days, which is great. Retcons are a delicate act, and as it has always been, I have never had any prejudice or expectations about them. All that matters is the final execution, which here is really good. An interesting detail in the story is Peter's power. He's afraid of using his powers because he doesn't know how to control them. Peter's afraid of punching holes into his villains. He's thinking about his villains, which to me shows a difference between him and Norman. I, I, I just can't imagine Norman ever truly considering his antagonist's health. Maybe he did once upon a time, I don't know. Peter will never know, because this is about in his perspective, and we just only have his analysis of Norman, which is super biased. Uh, colored by Peter's hatred. I personally believe Norman is a real person underneath all of his goblinisms. Someone who does love and who does want a family, but in the end he can't help himself. He can't bring himself to be vulnerable. He can't let himself be anything lesser than the goblin. Shadow of the Green Goblin is a big retcon, as it says, oh, all this actually happened, you just never knew. I don't like these kinds of stories usually, I can't help it, but to me, Demetrius' analysis of these characters is exactly how I view them. It makes it so much easier to swallow when I'm reading and nodding on my head along like, yep, exactly, that's what I'm saying. I think the best thing about this story is really the narration. It makes the story feel like we're experiencing it with our modern Peter right now, and it couldn't exist before the point we are at right now, which again makes everything just easier and more comfortable, and it adds a level of maturity to the story, a level like an extra layer, which Again, really helps it work much better. I don't know, I read this mini, and I really liked it, and I would recommend checking it out. It's only four issues, so it's a quick read. I think it's a great example of how retcons can add to these characters and these stories, how that can be super effective if done right. And I don't know, it's great, go read it.